Hi there, uh, my name's Chris. I'm a beekeeper from the southern part of New Zealand and I'm on a journey. I've gone from uh, doing a day job, teaching on a degree course, to deciding to become a full-time beekeeper. Hopefully you'll enjoy following along with me as I work my way from having just 40 odd hives to having enough hives and enough bees to make a living over the next year or so. I think you might enjoy watching it because uh, success is not guaranteed. <coughs> so today I have put the cloak board into this hive because I'm going to be doing my first graft of the season tomorrow. The cloak board is, uh, well actually three days ago I put a queen excluder in the middle of this hive, board up a whole lot of brood up top and what that does is it um, and I made sure the queen was in the bottom what that does is it makes sure that that brood on top has got no eggs in it by tomorrow that could be made into queen cells and then and of course I'll check that before I do my graft just in case I've made a stuff up and left the queen up top but I don't think I have I had a look yesterday couldn't see her there so Tomorrow the graph's going in. What's happening here at the moment with this cloak board is that I've now put a slide in there which divides the, that hive into two parts. It completely blocks all of the queen's pheromones from coming up into that top box. You'll notice that the front entrance is closed and in a minute I'll show you it's got a back entrance. And so what's happening is that these bees coming back, these foragers coming back, uh, can get only get into the top box from the front of the hive. Around the back of the hive, actually let's go around there and have a look. So around the back of the hive we've got another entrance which can be closed off quite easily and it's normally closed but when the cloak board goes in as it did today the front entrance gets closed, the back entrance gets opened and the slide gets put in three days after a queen excluder has gone in there. So what can happen now is that the bees in the bottom can get out. So the foragers will find this entrance, they'll come out, they go off and forage. When they come back, you notice there's not much activity. When I first opened it, quite a few bees came out. As the day warms up, more and more will come out. Oh, look at that. There's a bee trying to find its way in there. So they're oriented to the front of the hive. And so the vast majority, looks like there was an exception there, the vast majority of bees after they've been out foraging. We'll come back to this front entrance. And what happens is they can't get in the front entrance and then after a while, as they're just naturally prone to do, and you can actually see them doing it right now, they will climb upwards looking for a way into the hive and they'll find that entrance at the top. So what's the point of all this? The point is that this top box now is queenless and it's full of brood with no eggs and all of these bees coming back are going to go into that top box. So by tomorrow when it's time to do the graft, this top box is going to be hopelessly queenless, eggless and full, absolutely chock-a-block full of bees. That's when you drop your graft in. Now, I did this two or three times last season just to get the hang of it. This is my first time this season. I'm planning to be doing this maybe uh, quite a few times. Actually, I haven't worked it out. Depends how many successful cells I get from each hive. I'm told, as I read about it, that the success of your graft has more to do with setting up that box to be hopelessly queenless. Oh, I didn't mention that tomorrow when I put the graft in, I'll also put pollen patty, uh, pollen patty on top and continue to feed them. They've, they've been getting fed. I'm going to make sure they've, they've got good one-to-one -one syrup on them. So I'm told that the success of a graft has got much more to do with the state of that top box than it has to do with your grafting ability. Now when I read that, 
I was uh, I kind of relaxed a bit because my grafting ability is absolute rubbish. I'll do another video tomorrow as I do the graft and you can see I'm not very good at it. But I have produced queens doing this last season, produced about 30 and this season I'm hoping to ramp that up significantly higher. So the other thing that you'll notice, that blue one means that's my cloak board number one hive. Ignore 20 yellow 27 sitting there, that's a um, failed hive that's going to get a queen cell in it shortly. It's currently trying to make a queen but it's too early for it to go out and get mated. So I'll just keep topping that up with uh, brood and try and prevent it from going into a um, lane worker until I've got some queen cells. I'm going to shift that away from here in the next 24 hours. These other three hives are my other hives that I'm going to use as cloak board hives. They're all set up with entrances, close, closable front and back entrances so that I can slip a cloak board in between at the right moment and use them to rear queen cells. So what you'll notice is that I've got two 10 frame hives and two nuke hives, double deep nuke hives. Which one's better? Huh. Well, you know, that's part of my philosophy of beekeeping is I'm not sure. I'm told that nuke hives are quite successful. My common sense tells me that you should be able to get a 10 frame double deep hive to successfully produce more queen cells in one go than a nuke. But I'm going to try it and see. I'm going to put the same number of queen cells in each as I do my grafts and I'm gradually going to crank it up. My first graft tomorrow I'm only going to do 24 cells. Part of the reason for that is that I think that uh, it's still a little bit early for the queens to go out and get mated well so I'm just going to do a graft to blow the cobwebs out of the system, remind myself what I'm doing and work my way th through the process so that as I get going I become better at it. And uh, so the next graft I do will be one of those 10 frames. It'll be probably in about a week. And I will, I'm going to have to um, rev those two hives up a bit more and by bringing some more brood home tomorrow and drop it in there just to get the bee numbers up a bit higher. They're okay, but they're still not quite strong enough for what I want. So um, I'll put the first graft I do into a 10 frame. I'll also put 24 cells in there and just compare them and see if there's uh, any difference in the uh, success rate, any difference in the quality of the cells, any difference in the long run in the quality of the queens. Logic tells me the 10 frames will be better than the nukes. Practicality tells me that nukes would be easier for me to be managing here in my backyard because there aren't as many bees, but of course the fact that there aren't as many bees could well be a problem. And as you can see, Flynn's very excited about the whole process. What do you think, Flynn? What does that noise mean? That means I'm going to get fed. <laughs> All right, it's only a short video today. Hopefully it's helpful to, well it's helpful to me to explain it because as I said in my last video not knowing that the microphone had cut off um, I'm not an expert beekeeper I'm just learning as I go and so I fully expect that uh, the odd experienced beekeeper will happen across this channel watch my videos and cringe at what I'm doing because I'm making mistakes I'm okay with that if you want to help me out, put it in the comments below, but I have to warn you in advance that I'm not a person that spends a lot of time scrolling through the comments of videos. You're welcome to make comments and there's a possibility I will read them, but I probably won't reply because I've got more important things to do just at the moment than play on the internet. Uh, these videos are for entertainment value. If you learn something that's good, even if it's just learning how not to do it by watching me fail miserably. Um, and if I can learn something from you guys, I'll try my best if I can find time. Hope you enjoyed this short video. If you like it, subscribe, share it, like, and push the little bell. 
and uh, I'd like to grow this channel up so that I've got a reasonable audience so that uh, if I do get feedback and I do get time to read it there'll be uh, more chance of that happening with more viewers just I'm just going to zoom in there because as I was speaking I noticed something a lot of pollen a lot of pollen coming in on those bees and as I said earlier they're just gradually working their way up the hive and finding their way into that top box so by this time tomorrow morning that top box will be absolutely jam-packed that's all for today catch you on the next video cheers